If you're good at basic math, you'll know at least one technique to subtract these fractions. But if you are great at basic mathematics, you'll know two methods to do this problem. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you definitely want to pay attention to this second method. All right, so here is our problem. We have 1 fourth minus 5 eighths. Now we want to do this problem without the aid of a calculator. And if you think you know the answer, put that into the comments section. I'm going to show you exactly how to solve this problem using two different techniques. And these are must know things uh, for your understanding of how to work with fractions, not only in arithmetic, but in algebra as well. But before we get started, let me tell you who I am. My name is John and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one more time, we're trying to subtract these fractions without a calculator. Make sure your answers are fully simplified. So the first big idea that we need to understand about subtracting fractions or adding fractions is that these bottom numbers in the fractions must be the same in order to do the problem. And these bottom numbers are called the denominators. And these top numbers in a fraction are called the numerator. So we can't subtract these two fractions the way uh, they are written right now, but we can do something about it. But uh, let me show you a simple example of when we do have the same denominators. So let's say I had one fifth and I want to add that to three fifths. So here we do have the same denominators, which of course is five. So to do this problem, all we have to do is add the numerators or the top numbers. So one plus three, of course, is four. And we're gonna write that over the common denominator of five. So four fifths is the answer. Okay, so the first thing that we can do here is find a common denominator between four and eight. And how we find the LCD or the lowest common denominator is a whole lesson in and of itself. But the first thing that we need to do here is find a common denominator between four and eight. Now there's different techniques you can use to find the LCD, but this is a real simple example. So let's just kind of conceptualize what the LCD is. So again, it's the lowest common denominator. So we're talking about something that both four and eight have in common. Now, an easy way to think about this is the lowest number that both four and eight can divide into without a remainder. So what do you think that number is? Well, if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I think it's eight because we can divide four into eight. Of course, that is two. And then we can divide eight into eight and that is one. So although 16 works as well, in other words, we can divide four into 16 and eight into 16, it's not the uh, lowest number where we can divide these numbers into without a remainder, right? So let me be clear about this. We want to divide these numbers into the lowest number without a remainder. Now, there's another way we can kind of think of the LCD, and that is as the LCM, the lowest common multiple of these numbers down here. So what are multiples? Well, let me show you this real quick. So here we have four. So multiples of four are four times one. So that is four. Four times two is what? That is eight. Four times three is 12. Four times four is, of course, 16. And four times five is 20, et cetera, et cetera. So these are multiples of four. Okay, so we can take four and multiply it by different numbers and end up with these numbers right here. So again, these are multiples of four. Now let's take a look at multiples of eight. So eight times one is eight. Eight times two is 16. Eight times three is 24, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's go back to this four here one more time. So we have four times uh, five. One, two, three, four, five is 20. And four times six is 24. Now, the reason I did this is to show you that we do have common multiples, all right? So the numbers four and eight have 24 
as common multiples, okay? They also have 16 as common multiples, but what is the lowest common multiple between four and eight? Well, it is eight. And the lowest common multiple of these bottom numbers, these denominators, is in fact the LCD. Okay, now there is a, a completely different way to find the LCD. I'm not going to get into this in uh, this particular video, but you definitely need to understand this. But the main idea here is that we need to find the lowest common denominator and then change these fractions in order to do the subtraction problem. All right, so now we're going to talk about how to subtract fractions using the LCD method. And the LCD method is the method where you find the lowest common denominator between your fractions. Now, of course, we know the LCD between these two fractions is eight, but uh, what do we do with this LCD? Well, the main idea here is that we need to rewrite both of these fractions such that their denominators is the LCD, which of course is eight. So this fraction right here already has eight as its LCD, but this one, uh, this one over here doesn't. So we gotta fix up this fraction such that it has the LCD, and then of course we can subtract these fractions. All right, so let's go ahead and do this right now. Okay, so how do I turn a four into an eight, All right? So I gotta get this four into the LCD, which is eight. Well, this is not that difficult. All we have to do is take this four and multiply it by a two. But if we multiply the denominator by a two, we also have to multiply the numerator by a two as well. Okay, so we have to uh, write what we call an equivalent fraction. So what we're doing here is really multiplying this fraction one fourth by this fraction right here, two over two. So two divided by two is what? It's just one. So one times one fourth is technically one fourth. Well, not even technically, it's still one fourth. So what I'm trying to get across to you is that even though we're going to come up with a different fraction, it's still the same value, right? Because one times this fraction is really not changing the value of that fraction. All right, so this is a really important concept. And this concept is called uh, equivalent fractions. Okay, so again, we wanna change this four into the LCD of eight. So we're gonna multiply it by a two. And then of course, we're gonna multiply the numerator by a two as well. So we're gonna end up with what? Well, when we do this multiplication, and by the way, when we multiply uh, fractions, we multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So we're gonna end up with two times one, which of course is two, and then two times four is eight. So now our problem is this. So we have two over eight minus five over eight. And now we can subtract these fractions because we have the same denominators. Okay, so now that we have the same denominators, all we have to do is subtract the numerators and then we will have solved the problem. So let's go ahead and do this right now. And you have to be very careful because we are going to be dealing with positive and negative numbers. So two over eight minus five over eight is equal to two minus five over eight. So two minus five is the same thing as two plus a negative five. So the answer here is negative three. So our final answer is negative three over eight. Okay, so if you got this right, that is fantastic. I definitely have to give you a nice little happy face and an A plus. But here is the deal. This is one way to uh, solve this problem. And it's the first really main way that you learn about fractions. You learn about the lowest common denominator and how to add and subtract fractions using the LCD. But uh, what I'm gonna show you next is one of the best shortcuts that you can learn in all of mathematics. So it's really gonna make uh, doing this problem really fast and it's something that you definitely need to know. Okay, so again, if you know how to subtract these fractions using the LCD method, that is very good. But I'm gonna show you one of the most valuable shortcuts in all of mathematics. You definitely wanna pay attention to this because fractions tend to give people a lot of problems. And I'm gonna show you a guaranteed way to do all addition and subtraction problems correct, all right? So this method does not involve finding the LCD. And I know that makes a lot of people happy. 
Okay, so once again, we have 1 fourth minus 5 over 8. So how can we subtract these fractions without the LCD? Well, what I'm going to show you here is a particular pattern. Okay, so I'm going to give you the name here before I show you the method. And that is called the bow tie method. Okay, now this is my name. And uh, this name here, bow tie, is indicating a tie like this. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and draw a little stick figure here. So here is a stick figure, and this is a bow tie. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. D2 Math Man, I bet you have a bow tie and a pocket protector and a calculator and pencils sticking out. Well, no, uh, I do not look like that. But uh, nothing against bow ties. I think they're pretty cool. But I want you to remember what a bow tie is because I want you to keep this pattern in mind, a bow tie pattern. Okay, so I'm going to show you this pattern, and we must follow this pattern exactly the way as I'm going to uh, tell you, all right? So you gotta follow the order here. So this is the way this is gonna work. We're gonna start from the bottom right, right here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and circle this number. This is eight. Okay, so we're gonna multiply this way. So step number one is this multiplication right here. Okay, so we're gonna go from here to here. Again, it's not any other, uh, any other direction. It's not from here to here or here to here. If you do this, uh, if you do this method in the wrong uh, order or a different direction, you will get the problem wrong. Okay, so once again, let's start uh, start over. So this is step one, doing this multiplication. Now step two is this multiplication right here, and then lastly, we're going to do this multiplication right here. So we're going to take this 8 and multiply it by 1, okay? Then we're going to subtract. This is going to form our numerators, this little crisscross right here. So we're going to go ahead and multiply 8 times 1, get that answer, and subtract it by 4 times 5. This is going to form our numerator, and then our denominator will be 4 times 8 going this direction right here. So let me go ahead and show you this because this is easier than you think, and it works every time. All right, so here is the bow tie method in action. So we're going to take eight, eight, excuse me, and multiply it by one. So of course that is eight, and we're going to subtract because this is a subtraction problem. If this was an addition problem, we would be adding. Okay, so again we're going to be forming our numerator. So eight times one is eight minus four times five. This is step two. That is twenty over uh, four times eight, which is thirty-two and this is our denominator. Okay, so now we have eight minus 20 over 32. So eight minus 20 is what? Well, this is the same thing as a plus a negative 20, which is negative 12. So at this stage, you might be saying, hey, Mr. G2 Math Man, you came up with another answer. Well, here is the thing with the bow tie method. You're not guaranteed to get your final answer with the lowest common denominator. So you gotta make sure you have a fully simplified or reduced fraction. So we can reduce negative 12 over 32 into negative three over eight, right? So four goes into 12, three, and four goes into 32, eight. So once again, our final answer is negative three over eight. Okay, so the bow tie method is an absolute must know. And again, you can use this method in algebra. Let's take a look at a simple example. Let's suppose I want to take x and add it to, well, let's uh, make a fraction here, x over y, and we want to add this to another fraction, maybe like z over w. So here we have two fractions with different denominators. So we would have to find the LCD and then rewrite these fractions. Okay, now of course you can do this problem this way, or you can just simply use the bow tie method. So that would be what? Well, that's w times x, right? So w times x in algebra, we can write as x w. So we're going to uh, put a plus sign and then go y times z. So we can write that as y z over y times w, which would be our denominator. And this is the correct answer. So you have to know this bow tie method, not only for arithmetic, but for algebra as well. Believe me, I've been teaching math for decades. And uh, again, this is probably my favorite shortcut method and one of the probably the most valuable 
uh, techniques that you need to know when it comes to fractions, all right, especially algebraic fractions. Okay, you gotta know the bow tie method. Now, if you need help uh, with fractions, let me go ahead and give you a couple of quick suggestions or just basic math in general. One, I have a ton of basic math videos on my YouTube channel. I literally have thousands of videos on my YouTube channel that cover basic math, algebra, pre-algebra, algebra, algebra, geometry, algebra two level mathematics, uh, trigonometry, pre-calculus, and even calculus, right? So this is a, a broad range of mathematics. So I literally have thousands of videos. So, uh, you know, I made those videos for you. So go through my library and uh, learn what you want to learn. But uh, if you really want to kind of refurbish uh, your math skills, maybe you've been away from math for decades, well, let me go ahead and give you a quick uh, couple of suggestions. Now, my first uh, course that I would recommend, you can find links to this in the description of this video, is my Math Foundations course. This is a quick kind of little mini boot camp or review of basic mathematics. So I cover uh, fractions, decimals, basic number operations, like how to multiply, divide, all that kind of good stuff, percent, place value, etc. So all my courses are self-paced, but uh, this is a good starting point for those of you that want to review mathematics. Now, if you want to review basic math and then get into some algebra and geometry as well, let me recommend my Math Skills Rebuilder course, right? This will really help you out. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.